Welcome everyone to the Wood Film Committee uh, organized event, which is focusing on South Indian films. And we have here with us today, uh, Mr. Geo Baby, um, who is the director of The Great Indian Kitchen, the film that's being screened for this week. My name is Darshana Mini. I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Communication Arts, UW Madison. And it's my pleasure to uh, moderate this session. And this has been a film that most of us were like interested in knowing more about, especially the production process of the film and also the larger, you know, production process in India, especially with different OTT platforms uh, vying for uh, films to be featured as content in their platforms. So welcome Mr. Gio um, to the event. And I have a few set of questions and we also have some questions from audience who have watched the film. So uh, I would like to start with a little bit more about your career trajectory. Um, I know that this is not the first film, so if you can just share a few details about your career, how you came to the films, and how did you come to this particular idea for this uh, this film? What was the process like? Yeah, uh, about my career, I was a television writer uh, from 2010 to almost uh, 2014, 15. I was a television writer. I write satire in that all are very, very talkative, very talk of the town shows like uh, uh, that uh, telecasted in major Malayalam television channels. And uh, after that, I, uh, I work as assistant director in very few films. Then uh, I tried a lot for a movie, uh, but I approached a lot of producers, a lot of uh, actors for my debut film, but there is a lot of issues. Uh, there is a lot of issues I face from Malayalam film industry. That is quite natural, not unnatural. And at last, we, uh, me and my friends, take a decision that we have to make a film. So we independently uh, uh, take a movie. That is that is uh, two girls in Malayalam, Randa Pengutigal, which means uh, two girls. That was my first feature film. Dijo is also part of that film. Mm -hmm. Dijo Agustin so is also part of my all film. Oh, nice. Uh, that was very, very limited crew. Uh, we we stayed together. We cooked together. We used our own vehicles for the shoots. And uh, that's why we made a film very, very, within very limited budget. Mm -hmm. That film also screened a lot of international film festival won several awards. Then uh, uh, we we planned our next. That is my second movie titled as The Little God. That film won National Award for Best Child Actor and uh, screened a lot of international film festivals, won several awards from abroad India. And my third, and then I am I'm, I'm a part of Malayalam film industry. Uh, and my third was uh, Kilometers and Kilometers. So in that film, heroine from uh, New York. And, and my fourth is uh, The Great Indian Kitchen. Uh, and in, in Great Indian Kitchen, how I reached The Great Indian Kitchen? That's your question. Uh, after my marriage, I take a decision that I... Uh, I, I have to spend, I want to spend uh, in the kitchen with my wife. Take a decision is very, very, very easy. And that uh, the, and the pack, practical side was very too much difficult. Mm -hmm. But then at that time, I, I, I felt that the kitchen, I feel like a jail. At the time I am thinking about all women. First of all, I was thinking, all women around us, my sister, my wife, my mother. And then that's why I, I, I think a lot of women like, if there is a woman, there is discrimination. There is inequality. That's why I reached the Great Indian Kitchen. Actually, the Great Indian Kitchen is a lighter version of woman life. The reality is too much, too much higher than this. Yeah, thank you so much, Gio. So uh, as a follow-up question, I was just wondering that you really like mentioned about the independent film production in Kerala. 
how there is right now a proliferating set of people who are working on independent film format and the kind of different production strategies you come up with because it's not yes. always catering to a commercial audience. And that's where Great Indian Kitchen is also different because it was also, um, it, it gathered a lot of interest um, among OTT platforms. And you decided to go with uh, Neestream, which is the Indian OTT platform uh, in the initial run of the film before Amazon picked it up. So if you can talk a little bit about the kind of struggle faced by independent film uh, producers um, in Kerala, especially when you know, you don't, you're not really focused on commercial market and the, the kind of formulas that are um, palatable to the audience are very different from the kind of independent films emerging from Malayalam cinema. So if you can talk a little bit about OTT platforms and your own experience, trying out two different platforms for this film. So, Yeah, related with the Great Indian Kitchen, uh, first of all, we think about Netflix, Amazon, we approached them and they rejected our movie. We don't know what is the reason behind the rejection. Uh, maybe their policies at that time. Uh, now Malayalam films is, is not screening at that time. So we approached uh, there on I think on G November, December at that time. But I don't know what is the reason. And the same time we approached the satellite uh, channels, television channels. They also reject the movie. Uh, they are they are saying a lot of reasons. Uh, this movie condemn uh, religious issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's why they rejected uh, this movie. And finally, we have no option. Actually, we found uh, Nishreen. We Google it, and uh, which is uh, in, in, in India, in, any other OTT platform is here. That, then we reach uh, to Nishreen. We talk to Nishreen. Uh, they are very much interested. They are, they, they are uh, very new in. Uh, in, the, in the OTT industry, then there is no other option. So Nistream helps Nistream uh, give a very, very big support. That's why uh, Great in the Kitchen uh, streamed in uh, Nistream. For independent film, and you, you ask a question about that. Uh, I think in Indian film industry, uh, depends on actors. The business depends on, on the basis of who act this movie, mainly who, who are the male actors, who are the hero. Hero in his secondary hero is not important. That is the main issue. That's why uh, independent filmmakers are uh, struggling here. Right. So uh, how did Amazon pick it up a second time? Is it because of the success that the film had um, and the positive you know, reviews that came about the film once it was released on Neestream, because I remember that the main conversation was why didn't Netflix or Amazon feature the film because it's quite successful yeah. and foregrounding some of the really core issues as, as you mentioned about the unpaid household uh, and domestic chores that women are conditioned to perform as part of their daily life realities. So can you talk a little bit about this uh, you know, renewed interest by Amazon if you're comfortable talking about it? Yeah, I'm comfortable. Uh, actually, no more. There is no need to more talk. That's a very good justice from Amazon Prime. Uh, they they approach us and they are ready to stream our movie. But we, we do the all things for them. That's why now in Amazon Prime, that's that is that is an achievement. That is a good justice from uh, Amazon Prime. We are that's very positive thing. That's all. Yeah, thank you. So, you know, I also want to talk a little bit about the, the main protagonists of the film, Suraj and Nimisha. Uh, if you can talk a little bit about uh, why you decided to cast them, because, you know, the combination of Nimisha, Nimisha and Suraj as like a successful pair in an earlier film um, had been written a lot by film critics. So I was just wondering about your own kind of personal feelings on who should be the ideal, uh, you know, pair to do this. And also a little bit about the unnamed characters. The characters are unnamed in the film. So your rationale behind why you decided not to name them. Uh, from the beginning, Nimisha was in my mind. Uh, when I, when I, uh, first time I discussed this uh, subject with my wife, then we decided that Nimisha is apt for this. And Suraj came in, in our movie in, in just before 10 days, of the shooting. 
and uh, suresh was impressed the, the story line he was very impressed and uh, he need to do something differently he is always doing the same kind of characters they are different but uh, i feel that uh, is a good social animal his social responsibility that is more than an actor his social responsibility is too much high that's why he chose this film other otherwise he is rejected he can reject there is lot of reason for rejection and nimisha and sura they are very talented actors that that is a uh, well known thing and i was very comfortable uh, with nimisha and sura yeah actually we all are in a, in in inside the house almost 20 25 almost 20 more days and very nice experience i have to work along uh, again with them and there is no character names that's only because we, i i generalize the things we know all these characters i know all these characters i they, i choose these characters from different different homes so so that's why i didn't give a name for them yeah this is a very interesting observation because you know like all throughout the film you don't get to know anyone's name but it's only being referred to through very familial uh, kind of kinship terms eta uh, edi like it, it it is very interesting the way in which if you understand the language it's a different idiom altogether uh, but i was also uh, wondering about you know the idea of kitchen as a space because the screen time is dedicated quite a lot to kitchen and the domestic chores and you use this idea of repetition quite a lot Uh, the shots are repeated it makes you feel so uncomfortable and visceral and the way cinematography uh, you know is used is like brilliant you have like high angle shot then you move to medium and close up so if you could talk a little bit about the formal strategies you had in mind to make the people feel the impact of what it means to do this monotonous task like make, making this dish of sambar is something i think you know it made you feel that there is this unpaid labor you never appreciate your mother or grandmother or you know the maid in the household who has been doing this task over and over again you never thought about that so i think this film was like in many ways meaningful for many people to understand the kind of unpaid labor that goes into household labor so if you can talk a little bit about the formal strategies that you've used in the film uh, actually after my third film Uh, me and salu and my dop we discussed a lot about our what is our next uh, we must uh, we take a decision that we have to we have to change because we, we our first two film just like a, there is there is a lot of films like that kind of film is available here so we have to change uh, that's why uh, we made a film like this actually the content uh, the story idea came in my mind at that time i i i i know that this is we can uh, the story we can tell differently and there is lot of possibilities in this story actually uh, we have lot of time uh, shooted in the, in the kitchen and we never glamorized the food we focus on the process of making foods we focus the energy a woman losing for making food and that's why that different kind of shots different kind of uh, angles salu lot of contribute for that uh, and also editor francis and i i made a script like a, i i write a write an editing strip Mm-hmm. uh the movie's total running time is 1 hour 34 minutes or something and and the total scene number was uh above 2000 so above 200 sorry 200 actually for a one and a half movie that, that, that's definitely below 100 shots only 100 scenes only great in the kitchen contains almost 200 more scenes so in the time of writing uh, i follow an editing script this is the only reason that we have to change we have to differently we have to do something that's why right thank you so much it's really good to know about uh, the kind of behind the scene 
uh, processes, especially about you know editing and what you had in mind in terms of the editor performing the task. So this uh, leads me to the next question about pandemic, because you know when you were uh, thinking about the film and shooting for the film, it was the lockdown. So any kind of constraints that you face, especially with the whole entertainment sector um, coming to a shutdown during that time. So um, what are the kind of restrictions within which you work? And if you can talk to us a little bit about how Indian entertainment sector was trying to cope up with pandemic. Yeah, uh, we faced not, not very, very, we didn't face very difficulties because we are very limited crew members only. I think we, we are 20 less people for the film. Uh, that's why uh, after the shooting, I drive uh, my car for dropping actors. The producer do the same. And uh, we, we, we cook together, we stay together. Uh, there was an uh, unmemorable, unforgettable experience for all for all, especially Nimisha and Suraj, uh, their first time experience is that because 95% uh, shoot inside that house. Mm -hmm. So all are all time, all are together. So th that happiness, that togetherness, but there is some issues is there because uh, we are 20 people. We are, we have to take care about the, only because, because of COVID pandemic. That's why we, uh, every day, there, there is a security who check the, uh, what is that? Uh, temperature and sanitizer providers. Then the, we, we take care about that kind of things, but almost end with happily. There is no issues happen during the shooting. Mm -hmm. Finally, we check, check uh, we check the, there is, anyone got COVID positive, but we are saying there is no issues. Right. Uh, thank you. Because, you know, I also remember in some of your other interviews, you mentioned that your whole narrative about this film is emerging from different people's experiences. You have spoken with women and their own kind of process of managing the kitchen and household. So it's not one person's story. It's reflecting the way in which many women in Kerala are uh, trying to negotiate their domestic spaces, public, private spaces. And the film actually captures it very beautifully. Like what is public, what is private? And I was wondering about this whole, you know, reference to the contemporary historical moment through uh, the protest of women's entry to Shabari Mala temple that's referred to in the film. And I think that's one of the really strong and bold moves that I, I, I personally feel the film was able to incorporate. And for those who do not know about Shabari Mala, Shabari Mala is a temple in Kerala and there has been a Supreme Court verdict allowing women to enter the temple. For a very long time, uh, women uh, from the age of 10 to 50 were not allowed to enter. So uh, that has been a restriction uh, on the right of women to uh, be comfortable and do what they want because this is also about believers who would want to go but the the, the tradition did not allow them and the, word, the Supreme Court verdict allowed it so the film has a, a significant reference both to the kind of controversies around the Supreme Court verdict when you have like women Hindu women protesting saying that they are ready to wait till that particular age when they are allowed to enter and um, you know the character of uh, Nimisha saying that uh, I actually believe in what women can do. So um, what are the kind of, you know, thoughts you had about using that sequence? Because we all know about the kind of really, you know, heated public debates that was happening in Kerala about the rights, rights of uh, people, believers on one hand, and right of women to uh, choose what they are comfortable with. So what was your thoughts about it and the kind of relative risk that you were, you were taking in terms of depicting those controversies? Um, actually, there is, uh, I'm, I'm never thinking about the risk factor. Uh, actually, in 2017, uh, I started to thinking about uh, a movie about kitchen. In 2018, uh, the Supreme Court order is came. And that was an important order in woman life. That's not only about entering uh, in a temple. In whole woman life, that's a very, very important court order that very badly treat, treated some from political parties, some 
kind of religious parties they treated very bad badly that's why are we uh, take a decision that we have to discuss that matter in our film that was the turning point and that was the uh, actually i'm waiting for a shift in in writing time i was in a writer in writer's block i i i actually i need a change a change factor a, a scene uh, twister or what, what is what is saying that the, uh, the scene shifter we are saying that there is a twist there is a twist is uh, shabinol it's actually there's a cinematic tool but for great in the kitchen there is very uh, movie little more powerful that we included after we included sabrimala issue that that is woman life you know they are saying that women don't go to temple go and sit inside the house that we break through the great in the kitchen that's why that case that order that sabrimala issue we discussed in great in the kitchen yeah that's a really positive thing and i really like the way you use the gender discrimination as a larger framework both within the household as well as the larger debates on you know temple entry uh, so this leads me to my next question about um, some of the critiques that were about the fact that the film was all about hindu upper caste experiences and the, the relating uh, relatively less importance that is given to the character of the maid Uh, what would have happened you know in terms of maybe you know exploring that line a little bit because you know there it's it's quite strong and um, i also want to talk a little bit about uh, mrudula and the parliament language music that you have uh, incorporated here but um, you know i was just wondering about the the kind of global sisterhood or the the idea of vulnerability and this domestic chores is something which is kind of connecting the the upper caste woman and the lower caste woman so that angle when you were exploring what were the thoughts you had and also when after the film got released there were a lot of kind of interpretation of what that meant or you know people had different takes on how maybe you know that span could have been a little more developed so any thoughts about that actually why i choose that family why i choose this kind of family for saying this story it's because patriarchy uh, very strong in this kind of houses maybe our household uh, how maybe our housemaid usha the character name was usha actually usha's politics is finally nimija's politics that that is the great in the kitchen uh, says saying usha's politics finally uh, nimisha get out getting out from that home and being an independent woman usha already an independent woman she is getting paid but nimisha didn't get paid yeah. that's why that's why that that actually uh, the the caste system is very 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 too much makes a lot of issues in in indian india society so i choose this kind of family for i i have to i have to throw i have to uh, what's are pour that uh, waste water on their face actually that's why that's why i choose that that family they are they are they are thinking that they are the they are upper caste <laughs> they are they are the, the actually there is a feudal thinking is there that's why i i through that what is that that wastewater sequence is there if i choose a, a backward family it didn't work well that sequence yeah thanks you know yeah. actually the main reason was that this is the patriarchy very strong in these kind of houses Jai. especially women uh, they have no freedom in uh, in these kind of houses I think that's also beautifully portrayed because Nimisha's uh, father is in the Gulf, so they have a very different way of, you know, relating to the world. And then she's coming to this kind of a feudal setup, and you've have you have used this idea of, you know, photographs to basically map that the feudal pattern because there is a sequence in the film where you're focusing on different photographs and then using the soundtrack 
of women in the kitchen toiling really hard but their labor is not acknowledged and their aspirations and dreams dreams about making a career is never in the table like when they are being discussed it's only about them as someone who's taking care of the family so what happens to their dreams about you know being independent and taking up a career so i think uh, that sequence really stood out to me and that leads me to the next question about you know the use of um, parluvan um, language like the, the lyrics that are used uh, in the film and how did you actually come to this realization that there is a need for this need to bring back certain uh, tradition which were not even considered to be part of the dominant understanding of malayalam language in general and the need to also you know bring back the indigenous tradition so palwan language and you know your collaboration with mrithula etc actually that was unexpected uh our, while we are in the shooting at this at that time i am looking for a song there is no song written for the movie at that time i am searching a song for usha uh usha if, if i had discussed with the dop salu that if usha sing a song like any any kind of their own songs uh they are she is a that dalit woman so if you get a song if if she sing a song that is good for uh, that is apt for the, that scene that's why i am searching uh, this kind of songs but i don't know where where to search this uh, accidentally i saw a, a facebook post of uh, murdala there was a, a song that uri kudampara song actually murdala uh, that was murdala's facebook post then i suddenly contact murdala and uh, and we discussed that about the situation murdala very happy to give that song for the movie that's why uh, a song happened in our movie yeah the song has become yeah. a big hit and i it's also like inauguration of a uh, dalit lyricist in malayalam cinema because we do not have a uh, dalit personnel both in on the production front as well as in the larger conversation about the dominant history of malayalam cinema so i'm really glad that this happened and we have a few questions which are uh, you know by audience like who have watched the film and they are curious to know more about it yeah so first question is about you know the relationship between the between nimisha and usha what's the significance of the subplot with the maid's character being more freer in her way of life than the protagonist what did, what were you hoping that the audience would uh, get from this exchange uh, you partially answered that question but yeah. if you can talk a little bit about how you can save this relationship between usha and nimisha to come in that particular part of the narrative yeah uh the in in, in that home nimisha of almost full time there is her father is there her husband is there but nimisha is alone in the kitchen in the in the bedroom also she have only actually she have only one one friend like she is feel that she is a friend like that, that's why we add a song in, at that in in that sequence so the loneliness uh, breaks Uh, the usha usha break the loneliness and they are talking about their their periods and usha says that even periods i go for work and she is getting paid so that that is the politics of the movie mm-hmm. yeah and after that uh, that scene we added that uh, usha came and ask 500 rupees from nimisha that uh, i feel that they are they are to two friends they they are they want to meet again as a writer as a director that scene was not planned usha khan came and uh, asking 500 rupees that only because i i feel a love between them that's why that scene i added and and another scene we added that is not 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 written in the script that is you already told that that photo sequence when we while with the shooting i saw that that all pictures in the wall that that pictures already is there and finally we take a decision that we have to shoot this picture and and we have to uh, make a or is the a montage and we fix it 
just before the climax. Actually, that 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 climax that is actually happened uh, after the in the in, in the time of shooting that's happened. So uh, the politics is that is the politics, and why women women are just like a commodity or just like a homemade. Uh, no need to pay. They will work for the in their house. I think it's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so this leads me to the next question about uh, whether this film is a feminist film or more as a warning about the different kind of hierarchies that situate women's navigation of marriage as an institution. And uh, I also want to add one more question about the idea of paternalism because you know. Sudat's so uh, father's character, he's not violent, but the violence is in the way he's expecting certain things, certain ways, like, you know, rice has to be cooked this way because that has been the practice and I am comfortable with that. Well, clothes have to be washed separately, not on a wa washing machine. So yeah. the idea of uh, the clash between tradition and modernity on one hand, and this idea, idea of a paternalism where he's very kind, he's not violent, but what makes it all the more impactful is the way he's expecting Nimisha to fit into this idea of an ideal woman that for you, family is the be all and end all of your life and career is not something you should be aspiring towards. So if you can talk a little bit about the gender relation, because I think it has been done really well by teasing out that patriarchy is not always about violence, but patriarchy is also in different way, like very paternalistic way of, you know, making women obedient kind of, you know, part of the community, like you are a family woman, not a public woman. So this idea of family versus public woman, if you can talk a little bit more about it. Actually, uh, the answer is very, very simple, that uh, I'm, I'm a male. <laughs> I, I, I made uh, Suraj from myself. That is, that is the answer for the, all your questions uh, about this question, because I know uh, there is uh, in every house, every home, uh, there is there is father, there is son. They are taking the decision. Uh, they are behaving like this. They are not violent. I'm not violent, but sometimes I'm like Suraj. Sometimes I'm like uh, Suraj's father. That is not a finding. That's the truth. That was the truth. I just realized that's only. I think one fact which uh, many uh, viewers who have watched the film related to was that they were not aware of the privilege they had as men. Yeah. Yes, yes. And the kind of unconditional expectations, like, you know, you sit and tell the wife, bring me tea. Or, yes. you know, when Nimisha finally tells uh, her brother that you should go and take the water, not me. And that was kind of the shift in sensibility of how women would respond. So I think uh, that way the film was quite successful in conveying that message. So the last and the first sequence of the film is all about like Nimisha trying to reinvent her identity, like through dance. So if you could talk a little bit about why dance and, um, you know, this upending this whole film in between the dance sequences. In the beginning, it's about her exploring dance. Uh, and uh, at the end, she's also, you know, pursuing a career as a dance teacher. So if you can talk a little bit more about that. I, these are uh, this is happening. Uh, I don't know why the beginning shots started from dance and this end with, uh, with Nimisha's dance. Uh, <laughs> as a creator, as a writer, as a director, I don't know. But uh, in the climax, uh, I have a plan that uh, I have a wish. I, I wish that Nimisha, I need Nimisha's smile at the end. Thank you, Gio, for that fantastic response. So moving on to another question we have from one of the viewers. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the domino effect of the domestic abuse the protagonist experiences? Was it your goal to capture the abuse that an Indian woman experiences in the kitchen after getting married? Or was the film also a comment on how the woman's birth family could also contribute to this, as there are a few scenes involving her family? Yeah, actually, all these are happening around us. Maybe our own house. That I realized only when I was entered, uh, after I entered in, in, in my kitchen. 
and if we are sitting in a chair suppose we think that sub, not not suppose that this is a reality we we are sitting uh, in a chair and a tea or coffee coming to our near side and we just take that coffee and drinking or with uh, with a newspaper with a mobile or that is that is very i, I think that is just like a vip treatment then if you go to kitchen and and uh, making a, a coffee or tea that is very very that, that's not an easy thing and there is there is lot of after <laughs> after things is there yeah, they are there are lot of uh, vessels waiting saucepan glasses there is lot of jobs behind making a tea after the experience i experienced from my own kitchen i am thinking about formal life what kind of life they are living inside the kitchen and inside the house so i already thought that if there is a woman there is a discrimination there is patriarchy there is a kind of violence and if we search about domestic violence recording recordingly and officially recorded domestic violence in kerala in india that's very high that's why i am i am thinking about females and males actually this movie about humans in humans they are women they are uh, they were women they were uh, males women and lot of other kind of human beings also living with us why some kind of people some kind of gender streak like this right so that, but, that's that's yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's that is patriarchy right uh, so, yeah that, that thing right in the great in the kitchen right so like the question is also maybe you know i also had this question regarding her own family you know like there is this expectation that when a girl reaches particular age she has to be married no matter whether yeah. she's happy in it or not because her mother is also responding that you have to go back no matter what so uh, you know i think your film is also in many way a provocation for us to rethink marriage as an institution the, the idea of arranged marriage which happens quite a lot in india whether it is just about transaction and you know of responsibility from the from the girl's you know parents to now her bride her bridegroom who will take upon the responsibility so uh, this whole you know woman being like a commodity who is being Uh, exchange between two parties so i think the your film actually beautifully captures that which leads us to the last question we have um uh, from the viewers which is about the uh, the lack of dialogues like the film is much more about visuals than about dialogues it's not a dialogue heavy film that way so when you were uh, thinking about the film when you were conceptualizing the idea um, is that something you were kind of you know thinking more about where the audio will play a crucial role in the film that we have seen because the the kind of impact the film have on the viewers is also about this monotony uh, which is shown through the repetition of acts but also the the sound the background sound uh, takes a crucial role in the film so i was just wondering about your um, you know your idea about the prominence that should be given to sound and the, the way in which sound can also be a character in the film the way in which it can evoke the kind of sensibility in the audience on the kind of trauma that she is going through so if you can talk a little bit about sound on the one hand and the way you were foregrounding visuals much more than uh um, yeah. to to showcase the kind of trauma she is going through yeah actually the title the great indian kitchen there's a universal title title in in one side that that's a kind of uh sarcasm actually that that's a sarcasm the great indian kitchen and same time this is a universal story of women if if, if maybe in indian women struggling in the kitchen in 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 the world other part of there is there is every woman they are struggling because of uh because of the patriarchy or because 
no because of other a lot of other reason and uh, that's why uh, we have to uh, uh, take a decision that this movie uh, we we tell the story through visuals so this is an uh, from the beginning we planned that uh, we have to pitch a lot of good festivals so at that time if very uh, if subtitle is big mouse subtitle is much more actually that 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 is uh, we 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 can't listen to the visuals subtitles most of the time subtitles uh irritating uh as personally the subtitle irritating me that's why uh that is only that is a one reason and another reason is i already told that we have to make a different movie that's why we cut the dialogues and we have to tell the story through visuals or shorts that's why uh, there is lack of dialogues and and finally other thing is if cinema is a visual media so we we try to do or uh, most of them through most of the story things most of, most of the idea through visuals that's why that visual language is there and the sound factor and uh, actually uh, just before the, the shooting we have some plan that we have to add some background score music in in some scenes and after the shooting uh, every nights we edit our shots then we we realize that this movie doesn't need a music that's why there is lot of sounds in the kitchen mm-hmm. and we never polish a scene with music mm-hmm. so this is a, a raw film so we give you like that right thank you so much um, you know ji i know that you, you know it's really late yeah. in india so thank you so much for sparing time and sharing with us the behind the scene uh, production details of the film and also help us understand more about your own kind of you know rational behind making the film um so uh, i want to thank uh, pooja shivakumar who um, is an office uh, bearer at wd film committee who has organized this and she has also done a series of south indian films which will be screened in the next couple of weeks so thank you uh, for listening thank you, and thank you geo and did you yeah, this was an experience for me thank you so much bye bye see you again okay bye bye